It is important that we pursue God above everything else. Is God everything for us? Are you saying this to yourself? God, if you do not come along, if you do not bless this, we shall not move forward. Three things we can learn from the life of Moses. Number one, seek to learn God's ways. In the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 13, this is what it says. Now, if I have indeed found favor with you, please teach me your ways, and I will know you so that I may find favor with you. This is the plea of Moses. He says that, Lord God of heaven and earth, I want to know more about you. I want to know about your ways. And put yourself in this position and ask this question. Would I do the same thing as Moses did? Would I ask the same question? Would I pray for the same thing? Lord, I want to know more about you. The God of heaven and earth has come to you. He's visiting you. He's a friend of yours. But above everything else, you desire to know God more. This was Moses, and we can learn as Christians today that to know more about God. You see, this is the lesson we can learn, that above everything else, we can put God on the pedestal, put God at the center and the foundation, make Him the foundation of our lives, and we can say to Him, we should say to Him, Lord, teach us more about You. We want to know more about You. Teach us who You are. Teach us why You are. Teach us how that thing happened, why that thing happened. We can ask God, and we can learn more about Him. And why is that? To find favor in the sight of God. Psalm 119, 105, this is what it says. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So in order to live a righteous life, in order to live a righteous life, we need to know God. We need to know about God. We need to know what he likes, what he doesn't like. If you want to do that, you go in the word. The Bible today is the source of the wisdom and knowledge. You want to know more about God? You want information on God? You go read the scripture, turn the scripture, and you will find and you will obtain favor from God because you will know more about God and you will obey those commandments. This is number one thing you can learn from the life of Moses, his desire and his pursuit to know God's ways. Number two, second thing you can learn from the life of Moses is this. Again, we read in Exodus chapter 33, verse 15 to 16, it says, If your presence does not go, Moses responded to him, don't make us go up from here alone. How will it be known that I and your people have found favor with you unless you go with us? I and your people will be distinguished by this from all the other people on the face of the earth. This is the distinguishing between people of God and the world, that God is with them. So my question to all of us is this, is Christ everything for us today? Is Christ everything? We must ask ourselves this question and we must respond and honestly respond to this question. If God is not everything, if God is not the center and the foundation of our life, then we must desperately look and seek God. You see, God put Moses into this massive exodus in the history of humankind to lead if God does that to Moses, a man who was uh, a man who was raised in the royal palace and despised by his fellow Hebrew, if God can pick him up from there because he was not simply because he was excellent speaker or leader, no, none of that. Although we could learn a lot about leadership from the life of Moses, but he was his humility, his desire and pursuit of God. This is what made him who he is. So today, for all of us it is important that we pursue God above everything else. Is God everything for us? Are you saying this to yourself? God, if you do not come along, if you do not bless this, we shall not move forward. God, if you do not bless this relationship, we shall, we shall not move forward. God, if you are not blessing this job, this business, we are not moving forward. Are you audacious enough to say that to you? God to yourself. So it's Christ everything. We should have this attitude of dependency on God. We should by no means be self-sufficient. This is not the way of the kingdom of God. We must get rid of all the pride that assumes we are self-sufficient. We have to do everything under God's guidance. You can do things on your own. You can do all things. You can go wherever you want to go, but that will not be of eternal significance. So I pray and I hope that you seek to do what God wants you to do. Pray this and ask to God and say, God, if you do not go, we shall not go. 
we will not go. If you are not blessing, we shall not move forward. And then you will obtain favor and blessings from God. And you will be spiritually well and mature in that case. And number three we can learn from the life of Moses is this, his pursuit of God. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 17 to 18, this is what it says. The Lord answered Moses, I will do this very thing you have asked, for you have found favor with me, and I know you, I know you by your name. First of all, does God know you by your name? Yes, he does. But this implies a relationship, a relationship that is more than just knowing of. It is the relationship that says something deeper and meaningful. Then Moses said this, Please let me see your glory. My goodness, should we dare to ask that question? I think we'll be frightened and we'll be terrified if God does appear in his glory. So this is why, this is exactly why in Exodus, again in 1920, this is God's response. He said, I'll cause my goodness to pass in front of you and I'll proclaim the name the Lord before you, Moses. I'll be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. But he added, you cannot see my face, Moses, for humans cannot see my face and live. You, you notice this? God does not rebuke Moses to, uh, by saying, how dare you say that, show me a glory. No, God says, you cannot live if you see my face, Moses. But, but he says, I will pass through you. And this is what we have to ask. Are we ridiculously crazy in love with Jesus to ask this question? God, we want to know you. We want to see you. God, we desire you so much that would you come? Are we, are we audacious? Are we bold enough to ask this question? This question in, is, is coming out of a deep relationship with God. So Moses is not asking as a, just a shepherd, just a casual, ordinary man. He's asking as a man who has a deep relationship with God. So these are the three things we should learn. So I, I pray that you are ridiculously in love with God, that it inspires you to say, I want to know you more. I want to desperately know you more. I am in love with you, Jesus. I want to know more about you. Teach me more. Not asking the things of this world, the things that will perish, but asking eternal things, asking in his will, asking what he loves and what he desires, asking about him, to know him more, to love him more, to have joy and to have excellent joy in Christ. Are you ridiculous enough to ask this? Are you ridiculous enough to pursue this? I hope you are. Because our faith, it shouldn't be part of our life. Our, our life should be part of our faith. Our faith should be the epicenter. Our faith should be everything to us. From our faith should stream the things of life. I hope that you get this. These are the three things we can learn from the life of Moses. Number one, again, to pursue, to know God's ways. And number two, you say that, God, if you do not bless this, I will not move forward. Number three, you can say, God, I want to pursue you crazily. I'm in love with you and I want to pursue you crazily. Are you ridiculous enough to ask God these things? I pray that your life would be fruitful, spiritually fruitful, because we all need Jesus. We will need Jesus every moment, every turn of our lives. I hope that you have a blessed day. Thank you for listening and watching this video.